There were 12 of us to begin with, by Ian Gordon. With thanks to our producers, Ashley Lindsay, Robert Daniel Picard, Wes Sale, and Cameron Seegers. Chapter 11, New Forest, January 4th, 1990. The remaining contestants, of which there were three, New Forest, Black Garden, and the unwitting latecomer, Blue Bottle, suffering from a combination of fear and fatigue, finally arose from their slumbers just after noon on January 4th. New Forest, the first of the three to step out onto the open gallery that afternoon, tapped upon the doors of Blue Bottle and Black Garden, and the three of them, suitably exhausted, headed to the kitchen. Although they had each remembered to drink over the preceding few days, None of them had been able to so much as think about food. And so, duly ravenous, the trio, in surprisingly good spirits, cooked up a hot breakfast, consisting of bacon, sausages, eggs, and tomatoes. There was a calm about the mansion that afternoon. The snow was still falling outside, but it was no longer accompanied by the howling, violent wind. Despite the notion of the missing contestants, the bodies outside, and the unfortunate remains of false widow, who still lay on the floor of her bedroom in two distinct pieces, the survivors were able to discuss their situation rationally, still hopeful that White Admiral, who was no longer with them, had indeed been the killer. New Forest had once again proffered a search of the library in order to seek out tomes on the subject of entomology, and into the depths of the space the trio had plunged, seeking high and low for literature on the study of invertebrates and the like. It was an exhaustive effort, culminating in a number of appropriate texts, though the books sourced, focusing chiefly on arachnids, praying mantids, and true bugs, were of little use to the remaining contestants. Blue Bottle, particularly, was suspicious as to the number of books that appeared to be missing from the numerous shelves. Had certain books been strategically removed? It was much later, as twilight descended, that Blue Bottle had been in the act of approaching the fireplace in the reception hall in order to relight the fire, when he spotted something on the mantelpiece. Upon closer inspection, he discovered a small metal object. It was a key, a small padlock key. Immediately, Blue Bottle's mind returned to his investigation of the mysterious outhouse several days earlier, the building that had been padlocked. He called to Black Garden and New Forest, who had both been changing upstairs, and insisted that their next port of call be the outhouse, in order to test a supposition. With the last light of day dancing overhead, he was eager to try the key in the padlock while visibility was still good. Assenting, the trio armed themselves with coats and, via the kitchen door, stepped out into the snow. The calm they'd experienced indoors was amplified outdoors. In every direction their gazes fell upon pure whiteness. The blanket of snow absorbed all sound— Nothing could be heard beyond the crunching of the white stuff beneath their feet. They trod a near invisible path that, without the previous efforts of Blue Bottle and Company, would have been impossible to traverse. There was an eeriness about their journey, too, as none of them could forget that there were bodies out there, the victims of a murderer that, quite possibly, if their suspicions regarding White Admiral proved to be incorrect, could still be at large. But with every step they took in the direction of the distant outhouse, the threat of another blizzard increased. The light of day continued to fade, and the sky overhead steadily welcomed the return of pink, swollen clouds. The wind was picking up, too, soaring across the snowscape, disturbing the myriad soft snowflakes that lay on the surface. Approaching the outhouse, Blue Bottle withdrew the key. "'Here we go,' he muttered as his rapidly cooling fingers fumbled with the frozen padlock. Scraping the ice away from its outer surface, he worked the lock for a few seconds, and then, click. Bingo, he said victoriously, removing the padlock from the door handles. The wind was positively howling now, surely an omen, a warning from a greater force, acting with their best interests at heart. And fresh snowflakes followed in abundance, eager to halt the progress of the remaining contestants. 
But, heedless of the ethereal warning, looking to Black Garden and New Forest for encouragement, Blue Bottle gripped the handles and pushed the large doors open. When he'd first spotted the outhouse several days earlier, Blue Bottle had hoped to find something useful inside, a means of escape, perchance. No such luck. Within, a strange scene awaited the three guests. As the waning light, barely capable of penetrating the vast sheets of snow that were now coming down, poured into the open barn, it illuminated a space some twenty feet squared, the surface of which was composed entirely of soil. In the middle of the space, several paces ahead, the trio beheld three upturned buckets. On the far wall, to the rear of the buckets, was pinned a large poster with the words, What Lies Beneath, printed upon it. "'What the hell is this?' asked New Forest, her eyes drawn to both the words on the poster and the upturned buckets on the ground below. "'I—I don't know,' Black Garden returned tremulously. Ignoring the buckets, Blue Bottle took off towards the poster and tore it from the wall. Sketched on the wooden boards behind it were the words, "'The Black Garden,' in a curious crimson fluid— Blue Bottle turned to Eyeball Black Garden, who responded to his accusing eyes with a slow shake of his head. Just what is going on here? Blue Bottle yelled at him. I, I said, uh, I already said I don't know, he stammered. But New Forest had lost interest in Blue Bottle, Black Garden, and the curious message on the wall. Her attention was acutely focused on the three upturned buckets. Guys, she said, moving towards the leftmost bucket. Don't, Black Garden begged. Don't do it. Why not? Blue Bottle quizzed, his tone accusing. Something under there you don't want us to see? But New Forest paid no heed to the exchange. She knelt down, and in one rapid motion, flipped over the leftmost bucket. Oh, my! Blue Bottle started, but couldn't finish. Recoiling, New Forest covered her mouth with both hands. Black Garden simply remained where he was, motionless. Protruding from the soil, pale and drawn, planted in the ground like a young seedling, was the head of Grey Dagger, the first of the missing. What should have given Blue Bottle pause spurred him on. We have to know who else is under there, he said, and lunged for the middle bucket. He flipped it over and moved to New Forest's side in order to observe. The motionless, rubbery head of Yellow Jacket gazed back at them planted, just like her neighbour. And then it was Black Garden's turn to step forward. He did so hesitantly, but felt, somewhere deep down in his being, that it was his duty. Like an arachnophobe inspecting the contents of a shoe covered in cobwebs, he flipped the third bucket over and leapt backwards, letting out an involuntary shriek as he did so. The mustachioed face of Scarlet Data was revealed, his features dull and waxen. Longhorn! Blue Bottle yelled. The killer! It's, it's fucking Longhorn! Longhorn. The word went round and round in his mind. It hadn't been White Admiral after all. As a matter of fact, White Admiral had witnessed her deception, watched as she slipped away that evening to leave clues in the library. In all likelihood, she'd waited until Grey Dagger had fulfilled her role as the first stooge, and then removed her from the picture altogether, in order to operate from the shadows alone, to leave the clues she wanted to leave when she wanted to leave them. Blue Bottle was convinced Longhorn was the host, and she was insane. But where was she now? What was she waiting for? She'd wanted them to discover the Black Garden, wanted to reveal her identity as host in the most appalling of ways, wanted them to look upon the dead faces of the other suspects, and Blue Bottle's mind returned to the guidebook. Catch the killer, and the killer will crown you victor. Did he have enough to prove it was Longhorn? Enough to catch her, as it were? None of them had seen her following her disappearance. There had been no evidence whatsoever of her being present in the manor after her so-called death. Could he be absolutely convinced she was the killer? But it was just as Blue Bottle contemplated his theory that Black Garden took off running into the whiteout. Wait! Blue Bottle shouted, all too aware that the spooked contestant had no intention of heading back to Miller's Manor. Where are you going? Taking one last look at New Forest and the decomposing heads in the soil, 
Blue Bottle darted after the fleeing guest. New Forest followed suit, and, moments later, the three remaining contestants of Murder at Miller's Manor found themselves running blind in a snowstorm the likes of which none of them had ever encountered before. Thanks for listening today, ladies and gents. Be sure to join us again tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for the final part of There Were Twelve of Us to Begin With. And until then... <laughs> <laughs>